Hurts and Gems, Homes Reaction, and this is Black Hole's evil twin. Why evil twin? Gravel Stars explained. What? As soon as I saw this notification, I'm like, yeah, uh, I love it. I love how, uh, you know, because we're going to talk about Gravastar because it's a really awesome topic. If you haven't seen other black hole video from Kazuza, this would be time to do it. Why? Because you need to understand how black hole works, right? With the Schwarzschild, uh, you know, like, you know, Schwarzschild radius and like uh, singularity, event horizon. You need to understand like how black hole, like the more deeper you go, the in it intensifies basically. So blame Einstein, that's what I'm saying. All of this is happening because of Einstein. It's all Einstein's fault, blame Einstein. So because of Einstein's theory, black hole and the center of the black hole singularity is where Einstein's theory fail, maybe, probably. Who knows, singularity might not even exist, but we only have like Einstein's theory to go about, right? So people like uh, come up about like how singularity works, this and that, because we really don't know, this is where it all fails, right? So we have a million theories about it, because I've made a million videos about that. So there, there are people who like, wait a minute, this is kind of like embarrassment. Singularity feels like an embarrassment to like, uh, you know, f uh, physicists out there, theoretical physicists. So somebody come about Gravastar, right? Like Gravastar is like fundamentally kind of the same as black hole, but basically same thing applies, right? A collapsed star and everything, but this doesn't have like a, you know, event horizon. This doesn't have singularity, right? So, you know, how this all works is basically trying to, I think, eliminate singularity. They're trying to do that. Basically, think of it as a puzzle. Einstein theory gives us a puzzle. There are holes in those puzzles. And physicists usually try to like reverse engineer it some way. Like, okay, this exists. So how to fill those holes? They'll engineer a piece to fit that hole. Does it fit? Does it work? If it works, it's great. That's how, uh, you know, usually things like this go. So people usually try to come up with things to like fill those holes. Gravastar is one of those things, right? So imagine, uh, you know, not, not imagine. Our universe can be flat, right? Or... It could be positive, decitor metrics, or it could be negative, anti-decitor metric, right? So uh, positive would be something like spherical universe, right? Something like that. So basically implying that, uh, you know, you know, pressure, um, pressure, is that pressure? Yeah. So, you know, it, it all works by decitor pressure, right? Uh, negative pressure, if I remember, yeah, negative pressure or something like that. But the problem with that one is that uh, the, you know, decitor metric, is it theory metric, decitor metric of the Gravastar is probably higher than the entire expanding universe decitor metric. So that in itself feels like a problem, doesn't it? Like, uh, how does that work? So Gravastar is also one of those things that uh, nobody's discovered it. It's just one of those theories. Like I said, a puzzle manufactured to fit in the, uh, you know, puzzle piece manufactured to fit in the hole that is in the puzzle. So this is gonna be a really interesting video. Uh, I remember, like, you know, th th you know, like I'm kind of like forgetting bit here and there because it's been a long time since I heard about Gravel Stars. But this is like really good thing, right? Like really fun things. This is why I love theoretical physics and anything physics related. People come up, come up with really insane things. Really smart people you know, using things that are already there, theories that are already there, and like try to create something. And there is a lot of times it kind of works, right? I mean, Einstein didn't just like one day woke up and general relativity. He was like going back and forth and like general relativity is so awesome, right? He started with special relativity and then eventually come to the general relativity, the big piece, right? So it's going to be awesome. That's what What's this? Your reminder to get the perfect gift this holiday season. There might be an object so indestructible, extreme and brutal that it could kill black holes. Gravastars, cosmic soap bubbles filled with pure energy and with a shell made of the weirdest material that's possible in nature. What are they? What do they look like? And are they just a theoretical fever dream, or will they change our understanding of the universe forever? The birth of the this is relatively new, by the way, 20 years ago. So we can just say like, oh, we haven't discovered some must BS. 20 years is not that big of a time to discover something or like find out something type of way. Most extreme objects in the universe. Very massive stars die in the most dramatic way possible, a supernova. We've explained this process in detail before. 
but in a nutshell, in less than a second, their cores collapse, crushed under their extreme gravity. The star's shell rushes in, bounces against the collapsing core, and explodes, shining brighter than whole galaxies. Depending on how massive the star was, there are two possible outcomes. Either the core compresses into a super-dense neutron star, or it kind of breaks reality and collapses into a singularity, an infinitely dense point with no size or dimensions at all. A place where the laws of the universe stop making sense and time and space are reversed. A black hole. Gravistars are a third, even weirder option. Instead of collapsing into an infinitely dense point, the core is kind of ground down, like a rock pulverized to dust by a cosmic hydraulic press. Atoms and particles... Yeah, it just adds layers, right? In this way, it's not like infinitely dense thing. That's not how a star works. Uh, basically, like I said, it's like a counter-singularity type of mentality here. So if, if you were to say like Einstein's theory doesn't fail, Gravistar must be true type of way. Particles are crushed so hard that they transform into pure energy. A sort of mini-universe, if you want. And just like our universe, this bubble violently wants to expand and grow. In a fraction of a second, the bubble smashes into the collapsing star around it. The unspeakable mass of the star collapsing under its own gravity meets the titanic violence of the expanding energy bubble. Like an ancient god hammering on its anvil, matter is trapped between an immovable object and an unstoppable force, forging a new kind of material that we've never seen before, but that we know is physically possible. And then it suddenly stops. A Gravistar is born. What does it look like? Cosmic soap bubbles. Just like black holes, a Gravistar can have any mass, but a typical one would be about the size of the London metropolitan area and as massive as 10 suns. The shell of the Gravistar is utterly dark and the coldest thing in the universe, only a billionth of a degree above absolute zero. If we look at it in deep infrared, even the cosmic microwave background glows bright in comparison. How can anything made of matter be that cold? Don't all atoms jiggle back and forth? The thing is, the shell's not made out of atoms. It's made from an entirely new, unique and extreme matter that doesn't have a name. Yeah, because we need to realize, like, black, this is supposed to be like a evil twin black hole, like an argument, you know, against black hole type of way, right? So, in black hole, we know the sp spaghettification. Even the quarks get crossed. So we're talking about the insane amount of pressure and, uh, you know, that's creating something completely different. So we're not talking about atoms and quarks. It's like even that is crossed, right? To like an insane amount of thickness, right? Uh, that, that is basically what's happening here. So the density equals pressure. That's the mentality here, right? So the pressure is high. The density is insanely high compared to it. And it just, you know, the more matter goes into it, the more layers it adds. So basically, like, when you say singularity, like, all the matter goes into singularity, it's just like it's a singularity. So, you know, like, physically, it's really hard to explain that. This way, we can explain it. Yet, and that's at the very limit of what's physically possible in nature. Actually, the shell is so incredibly thin that atoms seem truly gigantic next to it. And yet, despite being ultra-thin, because it's been forged by two impossibly extreme forces, the shell is incredibly tight. So tight that if you wanted to stretch the whole shell by just one meter, you'd need the energy of an entire supernova. What about the inside? Well, it only gets weirder. The interior of a Gravistar is perfectly simple because it's sort of empty, completely empty. A perfect vacuum without a single atom, particle or wave. But despite being as empty as it gets, this vacuum is boiling with the most primitive and fundamental kind of energy in the universe. We need a detour to explain how any of this makes sense. The fundamental nothingness at the core of it all. The inside of a Gravistar breaks our brains a bit because it's a sort of super-condensed nothingness. What does this even mean? We'll have to simplify and use metaphors to make sense of what scientists measure and calculate. According to our current understanding of physics, particles like quarks, electrons, photons and so on are not really solid objects, but sort of waves in an ocean. In our human world, you can't have waves without water, and in the smallest world, you also can't have particle waves without some kind of underlying, omnipresent cosmic fluid. 
This fluid is the vacuum, what we perceive as nothingness. It's the fundamental ocean. Yeah, basically quantum blew everybody's mind with this one. Like uh, how basically things are waves, how it's a medium vacuum. It's a soup of thing in which it uh, wave works, right? The more you realize about quantum, the more your brain hurt. But if, if you basically let go of your like everyday senses and think of it as the fundamental thing, it kind of makes sense. At the bottom of reality, the waves of this vacuum ocean are the particles that make up you and everything else. But even when there are no waves or particles traveling through it, the fluid is still there. And like any fluid we know, it has inherent energy. Vacuum fluid is everywhere in the universe. The room you're in is 99.98% vacuum between the air particles bouncing around. Between the trillions of particles. That's how we found Higgs boson, right? Uh, if it's all wave, it's impossible to find one thing, like surgically remove it to see, oh, that's Higgs boson. So basically, in the simplest term, what they did is like slapping your hand on the, you know, water or something. So, you know, water particles splashes up. They did sh similar shit. So Higgs boson popped up and they're like, oh, there you go, Higgs boson. Particles making up your cells, there's vacuum. But it's different inside a gravistar. When our star collapsed and condensed so violently, it was as if the universe took a cosmic pump and compressed as much vacuum fluid as physics allows into a kind of super dense nothingness. As said before, even without any waves, the nothingness vacuum ocean of the universe has energy. But the super dense vacuum inside a gravistar has almost a billion, trillion, trillion, trillion times more energy per cubic centimeter than the vacuum outside the star. This is an unbelievable amount of energy and mass in a tiny space, just like, you may have guessed it, black holes. This intensely compressed vacuum ocean can't be compressed any further. It's at the absolute physical limit of anything that could be squeezed together without breaking physics, like black holes do. The ocean would love to stop being so tight, it wants to stretch out and flow back into the ocean that surrounds the star but it's trapped in the safest prison possible. The shell, which itself is right at the edge of the physical limit of any material possible. An eternal stalemate between two limits of the universe. Let's leave this world of metaphors and get back to our world that feels more real. In our world, gravistars are perfectly black, eternal objects with borderline insane amounts of mass. Because they're so cold, dark and massive, from the outside, gravistars look and behave exactly like black holes. Both massively curve space around them and create all the fun effects we love black holes for, from trapping mass and light in accretion disks. A yeah, black hole is basically a black hole with an insane gravity. So is it a gravistar? Is it a black hole? Like it, it will all look similar, basically. Or slowing down time as you get closer. For details, we've made one or two videos on black holes before. Only two. If you fell into a gravistar, you'd be extremely dead before you even hit the surface, ripped apart and ground down by the gravitational forces. And once your scattered remains touch the shell, the atoms you were once made of would probably break down and dissolve completely, only to be converted into the vacuum energy of the interior, making the gravistar an infinitesimal bit bigger and an infinitesimal bit more massive. Okay. This was fun and all, but what exactly is the point? Isn't this just another video of wild scientific speculation just for the sake of it? The point. Black holes were suggested more than a century ago as an abstract solution to equations of gravity. For more than 50 years, they were considered mathematically valid, but too absurd to be real. Few believed they actually existed. But scientists kept working on paper and looking at weird things. And then we saw stars being thrown around by invisible titans. We saw light stretching around invisible gaps in the sky. And as our technology and theories improved, we even sort of took a picture of them. We have evidence for them and they fit our theories. And nowadays, it's kind of common sense to accept them as real. Black holes are extremely elegant and fascinating but they also created a lot of questions that have traumatized physicists for decades. Singularities literally break our best understanding of physics. They seem to delete information, which shouldn't be possible. Gravistars are a relatively new idea without any of those problems.
Yeah, whenever you talk about physical world, you know, it really has to make sense, right? People say infinity and you like think, you will think basically, what does that mean? What is it physically? Let's, let's not talk about mathematics, physically, right? Let's say I'm a cosmic being who's like untouched by anything and faster than speed of light. What does infinity mean? And if it's infinite, like actual space, time and fabric and, you know, like everything about space, time, if it's infinite, what does that mean? It will never run out. So what, if the universe has a beginning, how does it never runs out, right? Like physically, let's talk about like, how does it never, run, is it something that is like constantly creating itself faster than I can see it or approach it? Then it won't be infinite. It's just, it's just like my abilities are slower than it. That would make it infinite. So infinity is really like uh, with all our theories and things like, what does infinity mean, right? Mathematically, we can talk about infinities, but like in practice, when, when we see all this, like infinity, like what? So this is just one of those like attempt, right? Like black hole singularities is like physically, how are we gonna make sense of that? But grammar start like, okay, we can make sense of this type of way. They don't need singularities that break physics or delete information. They solve the puzzles of black holes but they too create new problems, like weird exotic matter for their incredibly cold and tight shell, super dense nothing to make a super massive empty core. But just like black holes, they do work on paper and fit what we see. Yeah, because you know, uh, super dense uh, emptiness, okay. We know there's like dark matter and dark energy exists. Now it feels very weird whenever somebody talks about like, okay, really you're gonna like invoke dark matter and dark energy, which we know nothing about. But that's the whole point, we know nothing about it. There is such thing as dark matter, dark energy. We just don't know what it is. So uh, some dense space inside a shell, uh, okay, could be. Some dense material as a shell, again, like I said, like, you know, in black hole, even like quarks get spaghettified in the, because of the like uh, tidal forces, right? So with pressure, maybe something that is like not quarks and things, but could be made. Like this, there are a lot of could get work here. Well, in black hole, is just like, oh, singularity, like, okay, that, that, there goes the, our Einsteinian theory completely. In the sky. So are they real? And will we ever know? Actually, there is a way to find out. Black holes have an event horizon, while gravistars have a physical shell made of matter, yeah, you could see which it, means that they behave very differently when they smash into each other. The collision of two objects, as massive as they are, creates huge amounts of gravitational waves, ripples in space-time that travel at the speed of light. You can think of them as the music of cosmic cataclysms. The collision of two black holes should sound like a bass drum, a deep thumb that stops quickly. But two gravistars colliding should sound like a gong, leaving subtle echoes behind. Scientists are listening for these echoes in the music of the cosmos. Unfortunately, black holes and gravistars are surrounded by such strong gravity that it swamps most of the music. It's like trying to tell two instruments apart through a thick wall of concrete. You need very sharp technology for that. While we've made incredible progress in the last few years, we're not quite there yet. So this is where we'll end this story. Gravistars have the potential to answer some of the biggest problems in physics. Or they're just another idea for our discard pile. But this is why we do science, to learn that everything is different to the way we thought it is, until the day we truly understand the nature of reality. Discovery is... Yeah, well, go to, to blend.org, force us nutshell and support this channel. Yeah, I, I remember reading that this, this was, you know, initially like proposed uh, idea against black hole, like gravistar not black hole type of way maybe it like morph into maybe both exist type of way but like i said you know even like Kuzula said like usually uh, when we have holes in the puzzle in physics people try to manufacture something to fit it and usually it makes sense right because if you have like a let's just say a hole into something which is a like very specific shape and you create that shape just to fit it Something like that must exist out there because there's a reason why there's a hole there. Usually things like that work, right? Uh, there's too many stories about that in the past where people just uh, theorize something a few decades later, oh, by the way, we found it, right? So, uh, Gravistar, we could discover it, even though, like, uh, to me, it feels like, I don't know, maybe we would have discovered it by now because we've been looking for decent enough time. We, we don't, you know, somebody who like theorized Gravistar is like 20 years ago, but we've been looking there for a long time. We would have seen something like that. Who the fuck knows? But I don't know. It's going to be interesting. 
Alright, well, that was uh, Black Hole's Evil Twin Gravastar explained by Charles Cosmos in a nutshell. If you like Marix and no fun, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.